if there are two things that go hand in hand, it is emulation and console hacking development and drama just starting out of nowhere. So you may recall a video from a few months back, the best PS1 emulator just became proprietary software. This is about Duck Station. This is when the author Stenzek decided to change the license from the original GPL V3 to then the Polyform Strict license, and then changed again to what it's using now, the CC by NC ND 4.0. This is the license in a more short form. Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 International. Basically, the main points we care about are it's a non-commercial license. This is something he was very, very particular on. But more importantly for now, no derivatives. If you remix, transform, or build upon the material, you may not distribute the modified material. So basically, both of these licenses, both the Polyform and the CC by NC ND 4.0, I think I said that right. These are not open source licenses. These are source available. Now you might say, how would you go from GPL v3, a copy left license, to a source available license? This kind of is the point of using the copy left license to not be able to do things like this. Well, the author says that he got permission from the other contributors before making the change. And from what I can see, nobody has raised any issues about it who are actually involved in the repo. Also, he is by far the main contributor on the project, so rewriting things for people who didn't agree wasn't a crazy endeavor and very likely was something he'd already done long in the past. Now, I'm not here to bring up old drama and say he lied about doing this, he wasn't actually allowed to change the license. I'll just take his word for it as nobody involved in the project has actually raised an issue about it, but it's important to set the stage about how we got here and things that have happened in the past. Now, very interestingly, if you go to the license and you check the changes in its history, the Polyform license is no longer here. I don't know entirely what that's about. Either way, that's not the main focus. What is the main focus is this commit, 30DF16C, scripts remove package build. I originally provided this as an alternative to the broken AUR builds. This is referring to this package right here, duckstation-git, the duckstation package, and partially, but not really, because this is just pulling in the app image, duckstation-qt-bin. This one isn't anywhere near as much of a focus. It's mainly duckstation and duckstation-git. However, it seems that Archers would rather use broken packages and keep playing to me instead of their packager. I specifically forbid packages for duckstation. See readme.md. It does say that, but it's important to pay attention to the rest of the context around it. As per the terms of the CC by NC ND, redistribution of unmodified releases and code is permitted. However, we would prefer if you link to www.duckstation.org instead. Please note that pre-configured settings and packages are considered modifications. Now this gets into weird legal gray areas where is a package an unmodified release. I am not a lawyer, and I don't think most of you guys are either. This is somewhere that Mozilla long in the past has sort of gotten wrapped up in as well. I don't entirely know if this specific line here circumvents this issue. So, yes but also is a package an unmodified release. Now I'm sure the git package is certainly part of the issue he's focused on here because they are shipping an unreleased build, but I think the one he's really annoyed by is the duck station package. Notice the change in license here. This is CC by NC ND 4.0. This is GPL v3 only. This isn't them changing the license, what they've done in this package is actually gone and pinned it to the last version before the license change. So the license doesn't actually apply to this package, but it does appear to be a package for DuckStation. So it is entirely possible that people have contacted him with issues with this package saying, hey, here's a problem. This though is a very outdated package and is never going to be updated again. And then this one is an unreleased package, so that's going to have issues that 
are not going to be there in a fully released build. There's no way to request the removal of these packages without handing my details over to a distribution I want nothing to do with. So he has actually gone and changed his mind about that, and he did go and request the removal. I know of the Git package, I am unaware if he's done so for the Duck Station package, but this one, they have specifically stated that has happened. So this is step one. Next step, we're removing Linux support entirely, because I'm sick of the headaches and hacks for an operating system that only comprises 2% of the user base. I don't know if he's pulling this from download statistics, or if this is coming from the Steam hardware survey, or is a number he made up. It's one of those numbers and I don't even use it myself. But I'm hoping the Linux community will be reasonable because as someone giving up my free time and not being compensated in any way, I shouldn't have to deal with this. Just grab the source for Wayland and you'll see what I mean. Now the Wayland comment is very interesting. So do you remember, I think it was like two or so years ago, a story about PCSX2 removing Wayland support. So here's the commit where that was done. It was also by Stenzek. Stenzek for quite a while has not been the biggest fan of Linux and not been the biggest fan of Wayland. And I get it, right? Like if you don't want to support the platform, I get it. Now more recently, this project has gone and re-enabled the native Wayland support. So that is entirely gone now. And it was being disabled for good reason. At the time, the build was kind of broken, it didn't work correctly, and it was much better to just run it through X Wayland. So there was like really good reason for going and doing this, but at the time it was creating this like giant drama and uh, yeah, it <laughs> basically was just a big drama. Now regarding this commit, I've seen a lot of information being mixed around about what's actually going on. People saying, oh, the application is not going to work on Arch Linux any longer. That's not what has happened, at least for now, and we'll get to that in just a bit. What has been done is building the application on Arch Linux without doing some funny workarounds, which we'll also talk a bit about <laughs> as well. Doing that, trying to actually compile the application, that is going to break. However, what he wants you to use, if we go to this one here, let's go back to the readme, what he wants you to use is the app image build. So under the Linux section here, the app image is the recommended distribution method. Now there is also a flat pack. This is listed as not recommended. And as of a few days back, this one has been deprecated and future updates, it says not guaranteed. So in this case, he's actually the maintainer of the flat pack. So if he says it is deprecated, it basically means that package is dead and he's not going to update it any further because, again, he's the maintainer of it and he controls whether or not it gets updated. As of the recording of this video, it is still available on Flathub, but with it being deprecated, it is entirely possible it's going to be removed at some point soon, future, not really clear, but at some point that's probably going to happen. Or he might just hold on to the name specifically so nobody else goes and makes the build. As of right now, the app image is not broken on Arch. It's not broken anywhere. The current version of the app image can be used. Just clear that up. However, if he were to decide to drop Linux support and then go and start stripping out Linux code, that'll be another story and you can probably expect the app image builds to stop being made then. Now let's head on over to the AUR package because there are some fun things down in the comment section. So the main maintainer of this package is someone known as Eugene. Let's scroll down to when the commit was discovered. So Ruben55 noted that this was added into the build. Refuse to build in Arch package environments. My license does not allow for packages, and I'm sick of dealing with people complaining about things broken by packages. This is why we can't have nice things, and then added the check to go and kill it in that build. UG in the maintainer comments, a comment has now been added to the code that prohibits us from packaging it in our standard way. Broken packages that won't stop distributing my application. Is anyone having any issues with the package being installed in user lib instead of opt? We have that Ruben55 person saying that he's just going to go over to another package, that being PCSX Redux, and here is Eugene again. 
Developer threatens to end Linux support altogether if continue to distribute it through the AUR. He already filed removal requests for the package, so feel free to patch by yourself. So it seems like Eugene is not really interested in continuing to maintain the package. Now, someone did find a funny workaround. It does not modify the code, neither the software tree. It uses the bindfs package as a sort of workaround for mount dash dash bind. Because DuckStation checks for proc slash self slash exe to find the directory structure, and running in a troot is a safe workaround to make it work. Since then, it keeps the exact files in the exact same directory without a need to modify the qt-host.cpp function. Update, it also disables the annoying startup message that appears. Now, this change has not been added into the package. If we go to the package build, Looking at the log, the latest change was three days ago. This is a change from before this change was integrated. So it's related to something else. As it stands right now, the duck station package available from the AUR has not been fixed to address this. Now, I want to be very clear. I know a lot of people are very annoyed and don't want this to happen. However, the developer is well within their rights to do this. Even if they are still using a GPL v3 license, if they say, I don't like downstream packages, I don't want them to exist, I'm going to go out of my way to intentionally break those builds and make sure they don't happen, that's something a developer can do. It's kind of a dick move, it's kind of annoying, but they are allowed to do that even more so in this context, because DuckStation is not open source. Again, it is using the CC by NC ND 4.0. This is a source available license. And the definition of a package as something that is transforming or remixing the code is unclear and is something that you kind of need to legally test. I don't like this. But he can do this. And something else he can do is if he doesn't want to keep supporting Linux, yes, this is really annoying. But at the end of the day, if the developer doesn't want to support it, they don't have to support it. The issue in this situation is you're not dealing with an open source project, so forking it isn't exactly viable. That doesn't mean that forks don't exist. It's just forks from now. So if you've never delved deep into the emulation scene, just do yourself a favor and don't do it because there is so much infighting. There is so much drama. There is so many cases of people going from project to project to project, sometimes changing their name, sometimes making a new project with that new name and thinking no one's going to notice them. AetherSX2. And there are a lot of really talented developers in this space, Stenzek being one of them. Now, due to drama that has happened long in the past, long before the license was changed, a hard fork of the project does already exist. That is a project called Swan Station. This exists under LibRetro, under RetroArch, and this came out of a desire to monetize the project, which led to even more drama. Again, drama all the way down. You will never not find drama. Now, PS1 emulation is not dead on Linux. Yes, DuckStation is generally accepted as the best emulation option. This is just how it is. I know people cope about it and say, oh, no, I like this one or that one. DuckStation, at least until recently, before, you know, the license change and all that, it kind of held that mantle. There are other projects like Mednafen. This one doesn't have some of the niceties of DuckStation, like upscaling and things like that. Also, again, there is the Swan Station project as part of RetroArch. There are plenty of other emulators that do exist. Go to the PS1 emulation wiki and you'll see a list of them, but those are generally the ones at the top. This is a big mess, and... Look, at this point, I would not be surprised if he does go and just say, okay, Linux build over, I'm stripping that code out, and it's basically just done on Linux. It has been a long time coming. And that's just the way it is. Sadly, that is just the way it is.
And this is the danger of a project using a source available or proprietary license. If the dev decides it's over, well, it's over. So let me know. After what happened previously, were you still using DuckStation? I'm not much in the way of PS1 emulation. My main interests start on the PS2, but let me know down below. What do you play? What 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 sort of games catch your interest? And uh, have you moved over to something else? Let me know down below. If you like the video, go like the video, go subscribe as well. And if you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And what if I am a duck? <laughs>